Welcome to the first Monday of the month. I think it is. Yes, it is. It must be because I'm doing the path series. <laughs> All right. So uh, today I'm going to have a look at Druidry. And I do realize that I think I may have gotten myself in a bit too deep here. Um, you know, talking about all these different paths in such a brief, or such, such brief terms is, is really, really difficult. Um, you know, trying to kind of condense hundreds of years of information into one little video. Um, and not just that, I mean, you know, we had a look at Wicca um, previously and the divisions within Wicca, the diversity of it, um, and traditional witchcraft as well, it, it, it becomes very difficult to try and say this path is X, Y, and Z. And I've got the same, same thing with Druidry. Um, you know, Druidry has a very long history, um, and I'm talking about modern Druidry here, not the Iron Age Druidry. Um, there's actually very little um, crossover between Iron Age Druidry and modern Druidry, because a lot was lost, um, you know, during those 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 times. Um, there are a lot who, a lot of people who are, are reconstructionist and trying to, um, you know, bring back the older practices but um, it's very difficult to do those things so we have modern druidry which developed but uh, it's it's very difficult to say the druidry is x y and z i mean a majority of druids identify as animists but uh, beyond that they you know you, you've got some that identify as soft polytheists some that identify as hard polytheists some are pantheists, um, some are monotheist, agnostic, atheist. Um, so, you know, you've got this broad spectrum um, of people who have different beliefs and different practices. Um, you can even, we can even get into the, the fact that, um, you know, some people will take druidry and that's purely it. Um, you know, that's their spiritual path. Others take Druidry and then mix it with other religions and spiritual paths. Christianity, Buddhism, etc., etc., etc. So, you know, again, we've got this broad diversity of practitioners and people doing all different things and believing all different things. Um, however, there are some common um, elements within uh, Druidry, and I think that focuses a lot on the um, Celtic-based spirituality, which it it comes out of. Um, the history of it, uh, just you know, and and this, again, this is speaking purely of modern Druidry. Um, we can we can say that the um, it, it, it kind of formed or started coming about in the 18th century with the Anglican vicar William Stukeley. Um, he was the first to kind of, well, I guess he was the first, I suppose publicly, the first to actually proclaim himself as being a druid. Um, and then after his death, um, that was in 1772, um, the, well, he didn't die in 72, but in 1772 the um, Druidic Society formed, um, but that was after his death. Um, and then in 1781, the ancient order of druids was founded and that was based largely on um, free or had a great influence from freemasonry um so there was you know freemasonry was forming at the same time um and the strong influence from free, freemasonry came through in a lot of different spiritual paths and druidry was definitely one of them um, so I don't want to get too much in the history. I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is recommend. Um, so I'm going to grab the paper which I wrote down these names. Um, recommend some authors for you. Uh, two two definite books are John Michael Greer's The uh, Druidry Handbook. I'll put um, links in the description. I'll put it up up here. I'm swear it's this side. I'm sure it's this side. Uh, in this corner, the little eye icon over here somewhere okay 
Um, so that's John Michael Greer's The Druidry Handbook, and also Ross Nichols, who actually founded Obod, the um, Order of uh, Obates, Bars, and Druids. Um, he wrote the, the book of Druidry. Um, there's also Philip Cargom, and then there is Isaac, Isaac Bonovitz was an interesting one. He formed the ADF, as far as I remember, Ancient Druid, I can't remember now, sorry. Um, but have a look at, look up Isaac Bonowitz. Um He was a great guy, he really was. Um, but uh, he wrote some interesting, interesting books as well. So, you know, those are, are, are kind of four that I would definitely, definitely recommend specifically for Druidry. Um, they get very pure with their, their Druid, Druidry and things like that. Uh, all right, what else can we have a look at? Um, all right, so the beliefs. So Druidry is very much a, or considered very much a nature-centered uh, religion or spirituality by many, many people. Again, I can't cover I can't say that all Druids are the same. So this is a broad spectrum, a broad brush stroke. Um, so it is very nature-centered, which is why many Druids are animists. They consider the, the land to be alive. Um, but there's also a very strong emphasis on ancestral veneration. And from that point of view, it's based more on a spiritual connection with ancestors um, rather than a blood connection. So they all speak about the ancestors of the, uh, ancestors of the land, for instance. Um, so it's kind of a very amorphous um, group of uh, spiritual beings. Um, but there is, you know, a very nature-centered, um, harmonious relationship with the land um, and a, a very, very strong connection and relationship that is formed with the ecosystem as well. And, you know, a lot of Druids will be activists in this regard. Um, so that very strong connection with the land, the relationship with the local ecosystem uh, and such things, and trying to um, reduce carbon carbon emissions, etc., etc., etc. There is, it's obviously very strongly based within Celtic spirituality, Celtic-based spirituality. So you'll find there's a lot of emphasis on the tripartite cosmology of the Celts. Um, the number three comes up everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Uh, you know, there's three, three, there's focus on three elements, um, air, earth, and water, which then relate to the tripartite, tripartite cosmology, uh, the three lands of, Lansky and, of Lansky, land, sea, and sky. Cannot talk this week, not just today or yesterday. Um, so we've got Lancy and Sky. Then within ritual, a lot will, uh, you know, whereas many um, modern neo pagans will relate the four cardinal directions and they'll relate four um, uh, elements to those cardinal directions, etc., etc. What you'll find in um, a lot of druid ritual is. The representation of only three, which is usually the well, which is for water, the tree, which is for earth, and the fire, which is for sky or air, uh, which is where we find the sun, therefore we have uh, fire. So you have the fire pit, the well, and the tree. Um, that's the three representations within many ritual spaces. Uh, we have um, Awen. Um, which is the, it literally trans, translates to inspiration, but it's the three, sorry, wait, three, there we go, three rays that come from a source. So the source is di uh, the divine aspect, and then there's three rays that come out of it. There's a lot of ways to interpret this, and I think one of the, one of my favorite interpretations of the, the these three rays is in relation to solstices and equinoxes. Um, and you might be thinking, okay, well, there's three rays, there's four solstices and equinoxes, how do they relate? And this is where you have to get your nose out of the book. 
So as soon as you get your nose out of the book, you go and have a look at what's actually happening around you and take note of everything that's happening around you. So take note of where the sun rises at the solstices and equinoxes. And what you'll find is during the equal nights, the equinoxes, both of them, it rises in the east at the same point. Okay. During, I can't say whether it's going to be north or south because it's obviously going to differ between northern and southern hemispheres. But during the um, winter solstice, it will shift. And then during the summer solstice, it will shift in the other direction. So you end up with three rays. So, you know, this is, this is what you have to do. You have to get out, look at things. And this is what Druidry is very much based on, is, is connecting with your environment, connecting with your land. So it is about observing, about recording, about um, understanding, feeling, um, connecting to. Um, so you're really, really strong emphasis on that. Um, let's have a look what else we have. Um, you know, there's, I think the majority of the Druids will practice indoors um, at a home altar or home shrine. Um, some will go into their garden, for instance. Um, you know, there's, there's this idea that Druids um, built Stonehenge and that's why they go and uh, venerate at Stonehenge and, and Avebury and all of these, these standing stones. Um, there's actually very little evidence that the Druids actually built Stonehenge. Um, in fact, the more archaeological evidence that's coming out now predates, way predates um, Druid, Druid uh, activity. Um, however, modern Druids still consider them to be um, sacred. And they are sacred, so, you know, why shouldn't they? Um, so they will go and have public rituals. Uh, but not all. Um, in fact, the larger portion of, of Druids are probably practicing indoors at home, in private or in their own little groups, um, which are usually called groves. Um, what, the, a place that Druids will probably, a public place, or a, not a public place, but a, a nature-based place, an out, outdoor space, um, is usually called a nematon. And this is a from purely from Celtic spirituality. Um, plural of that is nemata. Um, but uh, a nematon is often a sacred grove or um, a sacred spot where... Uh, druids will go and as a group practice and do ritual um, but the idea that uh, you know Stonehenge and the Standing Stones and stuff were all Druid based I think is very comes from a very romantic um, idea but at the same time as I said modern Druids um, consider them to be sacred and therefore will go and practice ritual in those spaces which is perfectly understandable Okay, but uh, yeah, I think that's what I, all I really wanted to mention about Druidry. Um, just to get you started, if you're interested, you know, I've given you some ideas for books. So I'll, as I said, I'll, I'll put them in the, if you click the eye icon, you'll see both um, uh, Ross Nichols and um, uh, John Michael Greer's books there. Um, but I'll, I'll also put them in the description. Uh, along with the names of Isaac Bonovitz and um, Philip Congon. Um, great authors, great people. Okay, so hope that made some sense. And I'll see you next time. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.